The respiratory zone is the topic of this screencast. Information on the respiratory zone may be found in Chapter 13 of your textbook. This screencast was designed to help you achieve the following objectives. Describe the overall function of the respiratory zone. Describe the structure and function of the following. Respiratory bronchioles, alveolar ducts, alveolar sacs, the lungs as a whole, the pleura, alveoli, and finally the respiratory membrane. In the previous screencast, we discussed the portion of the respiratory system that does not participate directly in gas exchange, but it does move air to and from the lungs, and that we call the conducting zone. Now we turn our attention to those structures of the respiratory system that do participate in gas exchange between the pulmonary capillaries and the air in the respiratory tract. These structures include the respiratory bronchioles, the alveolar ducts, the alveolar sacs, and the alveoli. Gas exchange actually occurs across the walls of the alveoli. All of these structures contain alveoli and therefore are part of the respiratory zone. This figure shows the respiratory zone. Terminal bronchioles of the conducting zone branch into respiratory bronchioles, which marks the start of the, of the respiratory zone. The respiratory bronchioles lead into alveolar ducts attached to the alveolar ducts like grapes attached to stems are the alveoli. The alveoli surrounding the alveolar ducts form what are called alveolar sacs, and they really resemble a bunch of grapes. Running all along the outer surface of the alveoli are the pulmonary capillaries. To ensure that you have a good understanding of the anatomy of the respiratory zone, let's look at this figure from another book. So here you have the terminal bronchiole. The terminal bronchiole leads to the respiratory bronchioles, the first portion of the respiratory zone. Notice that alveoli are connected directly to the respiratory bronchioles, which is why they are a part of the respiratory zone. The respiratory bronchioles lead to alveolar sacs. If we were to magnify an alveolar sac, we'd find that they are composed of alveolar ducts, and attached to those alveolar ducts are the alveoli. Alveolus is singular. So these respiratory bronchioles literally lead to millions of clustered alveoli. And notice that the alveolar ducts, the alveolar sacs, as well as the bronchioles are mainly composed of airspace. For that reason, your lungs, even though they take up almost all of the thoracic cavity, only weigh two pounds because most of the volume of the lung is airspace. The lung occupies most of the thoracic cavity. The apex, which is the superior tip of the lung, is found very close to the clavicle. The base of the lungs rests on the diaphragm and represent the inferior most portion of the lungs. Each lung is divided into lobes by fissures. The left lung is divided into a superior and inferior lobe. The right lung, which is larger than the left because the heart is slightly left of center, is divided into three lobes, a superior, middle, and inferior lobe. Each lobe is supplied by air from its own secondary bronchus. The lobes are subdivided into segments, which are supplied by air from tertiary bronchi. And then the segments are subdivided into lobules, which are each supplied by their own bronchioles. This segmentation does have advantages because it often confines disease such as pneumonia, 
to only one or two segments. All visceral organs of the ventral body cavity are surrounded by a serous membrane. If you recall, when we looked at the heart, the serous membrane surrounding the heart is called the pericardium. The serous membrane surrounding the lungs is called the pleural membrane, or simply the pleura. This figure, which is not in your book, shows a cross-section of the thoracic cavity and really does a very good job of illustrating the serous membranes or pleural membranes surrounding the lungs. The outer layer is the parietal pleura and it lines the walls of the thoracic cavity. The inner layer is the visceral pleura and it attaches directly to the outer surface of the lungs. A potential space is formed between these two layers which, is con which contains adhesive fluid. That adhesive fluid allows the two layers to slide past one another, but it resists the two being pulled apart. Now let's focus on an alveolus. So here we have an alveolus. Alveoli are connected to one another by alveolar pores. The walls of an alveolus consists of two types of cells. I'm not really concerned about you knowing the names of these cells. Just understand that some of these cells, the ones shown in green here, produce a surfactant which prevents the alveoli and the lungs as a whole from collapsing when we exhale. Also notice that there are macrophages those are white blood cells that gobble up any bacteria, viruses, or particulate matter that makes it to the alveoli. Now let's focus on the wall of the alveolus where it connects to the wall of a capillary. This is called the respiratory membrane and it is across this respiratory membrane that gas exchange occurs between the air in the alveolus and the blood in the pulmonary capillary. This figure is not in your book, but it does a great job of showing the respiratory membrane. Notice that the respiratory membrane is composed of simple squamous epithelial cells making up the walls of the alveoli and simple squamous epithelial cells making up the walls of the capillaries. And they share a common basement membrane. This very thin respiratory membrane allows for the diffusion of oxygen and carbon dioxide down their concentration gradients as oxygen is loaded into the blood of the pulmonary capillaries and carbon dioxide is unloaded. Just to give you an idea of the surface area provided by the respiratory membrane for gas exchange, a healthy man would contain about 50 to 70 square meters of respiratory membrane surface. This is not only greater than the surface of the skin, but would cover the space of a four-car garage. Now let's review the objectives of this screencast. Describe the function of the respiratory zone. Describe the structure and function of the following. Respiratory bronchioles, alveolar ducts, alveolar sacs, lungs, pleura, alveoli, and the respiratory membrane. Pulmonary ventilation is the topic of the next screencast. 